Joining me is Mark Fields, who is the interim CEO of Hertz, and Tom Wagner, who is the co-founder and managing member of Knighthead Capital Management. Gentlemen, thank you both so much for taking the time, and congratulations on this milestone occasion as well. Uh, Tom, I want to start with you. This bankruptcy turnaround, a very welcome sight, especially for shareholders. So what about the industry and Hertz itself made this a viable business to revive? Well, I think first you start with uh, an incredible brand, 103 years old at this point, a long history of being first and in innovating uh, in the rental car industry, and a global network of customers, of employees and partners around the world that will help us deliver top quality service to our customers. And I think that you know, when we looked at the asset, we felt that there were things that could be done relatively quickly to really change the customer experience. and and drive the company to be ESG focused, and particularly on the sustainability front. Um, so there was a, a huge amount of focus internally on building a charging network, on moving to electrification, uh, and really improving the customer experience. So when we factored all of those things together, it was uh, too irresistible to pass up. It was a, an opportunity that we had to pursue and really dive into with everything we had. Mark, LL Cool J would say, don't call it a comeback, but you'll have to forgive us if we do call this a comeback, as Hertz managed to rebound from pandemic-related lockdowns, the Wall Street bet saga, to a car shortage. So talk to us about this return to public markets and the challenges you see impacting the company in the future and how you intend to navigate those. Yeah, well, first off, yeah, it's, it's, it's not only a comeback or a turnaround, but uh, I'd also, Brian, talk about it as, and think about it as a transformation of the business because this is not only about running an excellent rental car company, and we're gonna be very focused on that, but it's also about you know, playing that central role in the modern mobility ecosystem and, and making ourselves literally indis indispensable to all the mobility players going forward, no matter where mobility 2.0 happens. Um, you know, as you know, given some of the uh, manufacturing issues in terms of uh, the automakers because of supply chain issues, that's created a, a demand and supply imbalance, and so the industry is, is benefiting from that right now. But we're using this time uh, to, to really increase our firepower, to make the investments that we want, to lead and be that major component of the mobility ecosystem, and it includes, as Tom mentioned, major investment in electrification, um, really across the industry. We want to partner with all of the major OEMs and help them with their objectives as we look to transition propulsion systems across the planet to electrification. As you mentioned electrification, I mean, we certainly do know that the EV rollout plays a major role in the growth of Hertz uh, and that strategy going forward. How much are you committed to continuing to invest into that? Well, we're, we're very committed. Uh, obviously, you know, from our first partnership with Tesla, which we're extremely excited about, I'd, I'd, I'd first note that our move to electrification is really a customer in move. We're looking at customers, they want to experience EVs, so literally now with our relationship with Tesla, we become the first and best choice for them to experience EVs. And as I said, we're ready to partner across the industry on this, uh, but it's important, it's an important plank of our strategy going forward because when you look at the big trends that are shaping mobility going forward, it's electrification, it's shared mobility, it's connected cars, and it's autonomy, and we're positioning the company to play in all those. Uh, many of us have seen the marketing campaign featuring Tom Brady uh, letting travelers know of the Tesla EV editions. Uh, T Tesla CEO Elon Musk later did throw cold water on the EV purchase announcement via Twitter. Uh, it's left many wondering, is the deal finally secure now? How much is Hertz paying for the Tesla Model 3 order, and, and what's the anticipated delivery? timeline you know as it relates to our partnerships with OEMs you know we don't uh, have external discussions around timing around price we work with the OEMs to find a mix of models and trim that, that fit both the OEM and our customers and this is a an iterative process for us we're seeing incredible demand for EVs from our customers as mark articulated and I think that we now have a better flavor for what vehicles make the most sense in the fleet. And so, you know, that's something that we work very, very closely with the OEMs on and thinking about how we introduce them to the fleet. Because importantly, we have to make sure we have the infrastructure in place to deliver on those promises, to ensure that the customer experience is completely pristine. As wonderful an experience from, you know, in renting an EV as it is to buy one or lease one. And so, you know, we expect that this, this partnership will continue to evolve and we'll, we'll work collaboratively with, as Mark said, all the OEMs to introduce 
a wider variety of vehicles into our fleet, and that's something that we and our customers are very excited about. And does it seem that the delivery timeline would still be on track for that 2022 anticipated entry into kind of EVs added on to the Hertz fleet? You know, right now the demand is vastly in excess of any amount of supply that we can bring in. So the key for us, as I said, is really making sure that the delivery cadence works in the context of our ecosystem. And so, you know, all of these things are interrelated. You know, we want to do this as quickly as we possibly can. We're certainly making every effort to be able to do that, but we've got to get it right on both sides. And, and that really requires a, a very, very close collaboration with our OEM partners. And, you know, the EV strategy will be no different than introducing, you know, new and different models into the fleet uh, in, in more traditional vehicles. So I think, you know, this is one that will be a continuing story. We're super excited about it. I know our customers are going crazy to get their hands on these things. You know, people are dying to try them and we're really excited about that and we're looking forward to being able to deliver on that promise. Certainly. Mark, I'd be interested in getting your perspective as the former CEO of Ford when you look across the broader automotive landscape right now and you see some of the challenges in producing automobiles and then additionally you see the dominance of the rentals of automobiles as well. Um, you know, how do you kind of evaluate this broader landscape and where Hertz has potentially a, a, a competitive positioning even against those who are selling vehicles? vehicles right now? Well, we think we're in a, in a very good position. First off, when you look, first off, the, the demand for vehicles, whether it's new vehicles or renting vehicles, et cetera, is very, very healthy. Obviously, and that's a combination of folks who, who want to travel you know, post-COVID, you know, they're tired of being cooped up. That's good for our business. When you look at the borders being opened uh, overseas as of uh, yesterday, that's going to be good for our business. But you know, clearly, as we go forward, um, no matter whether it's renting or, as you know, we announced a uh, relationship with Uber so that we can offer our, our vehicles through uh, Uber and, and hitting that shared mobility uh, growth going forward. The bottom line is we have a lot of growth, I think, ahead of us at Hertz, and it's our opportunity now to execute on that and through some of the partnerships that we have announced over the last week, combined with the very hard work of all of our employees, I'm very, very optimistic about the future. Do you believe that the partnership or the purchase order among the Tesla vehicles uh, would be kind of an exclusive ad of Tesla vehicles? Or are there other automakers that you would be looking at making strategic purchases of electric vehicles more internationally to solidify that EV fleet among your vehicles offered? Absolutely. I would, you know, our, one of our key pieces of our strategy is to lead in the adoption of electric vehicles around the world. So again, as Tom said, we're very excited about our relationship with Tesla, uh, but that's just the start, right? We want to work with all of the major uh, car makers in going to them and saying, what are your objectives? And then how can Hertz help? How can we bring our expertise around operating and managing large fleets bring to bear to help you be successful? And I think that's going to bear fruit over time. Is there a total percentage of the fleet, I guess, internationally that you would look to in the future, perhaps a target roadmap to say X percent of our fleet should be electrified by 2025, by 2030 and so forth? Well, part of that, it's, it's uh, you know, what's, <clears throat> what uh, type of production is going to be available. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is going to be an iterative process. I would say this, our approach on this is going to be totally a consumer in and demand driven equation not where we say we want to grow our fleet to X, because that way we can make sure that the business is successful from a financial standpoint, and as importantly, as Tom mentioned, making sure that we're satisfying customers to the demand that they want. Mark Fields, interim CEO of Hertz, and Tom Wagner, co-founder and managing member of Knighthead Capital Management. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us here on the day and uh, taking some of our most pressing questions on this major milestone occasion for HTZ, everyone.